players in the world, and uh, when they're going, they're uh, they're tough to beat. But our team, we're on a high right now, and they're, they've been off for a few days, and we'll hopefully we can carry that uh, emotional high in there and steal a game. And uh, um, you know, we believe we can win, and we've played hard, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna play disciplined hockey and hopefully try and shut them down. And we've been getting great goaltending all all through the playoffs, and hopefully that'll continue. And uh, and maybe we can upset them. Uh, you know, it's happened before, and it, it's certainly possible. The Oilers are looking to regain the Stanley Cup. They waltz through the Smite Division playoffs in only nine games. They're arrested, and they, too, have great goaltending in Grant Fuhr. He's 6-1 in the playoffs and always seems to come up with the big saves at just the right time. The Oilers are playing great. The way we're playing right now is the way they win Stanley Cups, and I don't think I've ever seen, even when we won two Stanley Cups, I don't think I've ever seen our team play any better. The Campbell Conference Finals are next from Edmonton. It's game one. The favorite Oilers against the Cinderella Red Wings. All right, Tommies, any reasonable man would say Detroit doesn't have a prayer. How could they ever beat Edmonton? The question for Mike Leute, what does Coach Jacques Demers have in mind? Well, Jacques is going to try and keep his team composed, and they're going to try and take the middle of the ice away. Also, front Paul Coffey and not let him get up with the play. But Jacques' style is to take a lead, which they must do, and then sit on it somewhat. He can't do that against Edmonton because a two-goal lead or deficit will not scare Edmonton. Well, there are very few teams that can really do much of anything against the Edmonton Oilers. They have five terrific players. They have great goaltending. What about the layoff? They haven't played in eight days. I think this might be Detroit's best opportunity to win in the Northland Coliseum. The layoff has to hurt you somewhat, particularly because Edmonton is such a finesse, pass, run and gun, and that takes coordination that you cannot get in just practice. Well, we'll see if Edmonton is rusty at all. You kind of doubt it, but that might be the Detroit Red Wings' hope. They've changed goalies from the Toronto series, and they're not going with Glenn Hanlon, but with Greg Steffen. This is part of jo Jock's mental gymnastics. He likes to do these things, and with uh, Greg Steffen, I think he's going to give his team a chance to acclimate to Edmonton, to the Oilers. Sometimes the myth is greater than the monster, and what he wants is to let his team see Edmonton in the playoffs, and then come back in game two with his best goaltender, or the goaltender who's playing the best at this point. The Edmonton Oilers are great. They can do it all, but never neglect the fact that Jock Demers has worked some miracles with St. Louis and now with the Detroit Red Wings. Very interesting decision. Thanks a lot, Mike Liud and Ken Wilson. Interesting decision going with not Glenn Hanlon tonight, but what, with Greg Steffen in starting goal for the Detroit Red Wings. Now look, last night at overtime at the Spectrum in Philadelphia, there was a very controversial goal that gave the Flyers the win in Game 1 of the Wales Conference Finals. 4-3 to three was the final. One of the New York papers, the Post, in one of its editions today, the headline said, Phantom Goal. Well, it wasn't a phantom goal. We had the camera angle that showed you. It was indeed a good call by referee Terry Gregson. We'll show you that goal when we return on Road to the Cup. All right, Tom Mees, I think we're as excited as the fans are here at the North Lions Coliseum and as excited as the fans across North America are where you have a chance to see an outstanding team against the upstart wings with Greg Steffen in goal. Well, with Greg Steffen, it's, uh, this is a surprise. But this is part of Jacques, and this is how he keeps his team loose and on... Uh, and also on and edge. With Grant Fuhr, there's no surprise there. He's been very good for the Oilers as long as he's played in the league. And he had trouble against Los Angeles, but you know that they're always going to come back to Grant Fuhr. So Stefan and Fuhr are ready. This is an extremely noisy crowd here tonight in Edmonton. Much noisier than you'll usually find here in this building. There is Glenn Sather, general manager, coach, John Muckler at the far end, and the more emotional, to be sure, Jock Demers. Very animated. That's, uh, I think, how you would have to describe Jock. But his players have always responded to that. The referee tonight is Bob Myers. The linesmen are Ron Finn and Sweet Knox. Sean Burr faces off against Mark Messier. That's the way Jock Demers wants it. Everybody said, what are you going to do with Gretzky? He says, I'm going to have Sean Burr on against Messier. Here's Tim Higgins, the former Devil and Blackhawk. He's stopped, and the Wings will retreat into their own zone. Here's Lee Norwood. He's on defense with Gilbert Delorme. Delorme ends up with a puck. The veteran Bridgman is along the boards. He takes the pass. Bridgman with Burr and Higgins. This is Tim Higgins. The shot, and Grant Shore makes the first save of the night. Opening game of the Campbell Conference Championship Series. Glenn Anderson winds up long shot, and Stefan makes his first save. Richmond can't get the puck out. Randy Gregg into the corner to Messier. Anderson's in front. 
But Stephen stops the pass and clears to Sean Burr, who had the fine season for Detroit. Now the veteran Bridgman gets it to Bob Probert. Probert can't get the shot. Here's Probert is on a backhand drive. And Bob Probert is stopped. Now Eiserman and a brilliant save by Shore on Steve Eiserman coming right off the Red Wing bench. Well, this is where Grant Shore sometimes is not given as much credit as he deserves. Edmonton does make a lot of mistakes. And on that play, Greg uh, Dury with Randy Gregg being caught up by the two-on-one very early. And that's what Detroit's going to have to do score when they have that type of opportunity. Now the face-off will be in the Edmonton zone. Josh Demers has the Steve Eiserman line on against the Wayne Gretzky line. There is Yari Curry, and he has been brilliant as always. He was just terrific against the Red Wings during the regular season. Gallant able to keep the puck in. Robert with Iserman and Gallant up front for Detroit. McTavish loses the puck to Gallant. Steve Smith can't play it. Iserman gets it to Gallant. His shot, the save by Fuhr. Dave Lewis, the veteran, a high drive. Here's Darren Veach from the right point. At the side of the net, Fuhr almost misplays the puck. Robert can't handle it. And here's Rayo Rutzelainen up to Yari Curry. He's got Gretzky at center ice. And Probert coming back stops Edmonton in the neutral zone. That's what the Red Wings want to do. They're not going to forecheck very deep. Just stop the Edmonton Oilers in the center of the ice. Well, with doing that, though, they cannot, they cannot get caught uh, in deep because of Edmonton's quick transition play. And that's what they're going to try to prevent early in the game. Mike O'Connell without the helmet. He's really stabilized the Detroit defense. He can't get away from Yari Curry. There's some good back checking by Curry. Curry always in the running for the best defensive forward in the National Hockey League, and that's why. Just past the two-minute mark in the first period here in Edmonton. There's no score. Buck comes to center ice, and Adam Oates with it. Now an opportunity for Brent Ashton. He's knocked down. Here's O'Connell trying to center, and he's bumped by Gretzky, who ends up with a puck. Wayne Gretzky accelerating, knocked down, no penalty. Gretzky back with a puck again. Just clears it to center ice. Zombo gets it ahead, and the Red Wings are offside at the Edmonton Blue Line. The opening game with plenty of excitement here in Edmonton, and there's no score. All right, Tom Mees, the neutral faceoff. Crucial Niski wins the draw. Greg gets the puck over and McSorley dumps it in. Mark Lamb tied up along the board. Then Beach gets the puck loose. It comes high. Kevin Lowe after it. And he socks it back into the Detroit zone. Beach and Lewis are on defense to the wing. Stephen knocked down. He's dazed, but the wings control. This is Mark Kumpel, the ex Nordique, and a drive goes wide. McSorley bumped heavily, but the North. Division champions unable to control, and the Oilers get the puck into the Detroit zone only to have Crucial Niski lose it. Kevin Lowe shooting the puck right back in. Detroit has gone a long way with some big, burly veteran defensemen like this man, Dave Lewis, who runs into Steve Smith. Crucial Niski in front. And Kevin McClellan unable to get his stick on the puck, and it's Higgins for the Red Wings. He's bumped by Hunter. Pure playing the puck for Rutzelainen. Then Coffey runs into McTavish. Burr trying to center Kent. And it is Kevin McClellan, a rough, tough centerman for Edmonton. No score coming up to the four-minute mark in the first period. McClellan with McTavish. And McClellan's shot goes wide. Joe Koser bumped down as he gets the puck out. Now Koser and Dave Hunter bump in the neutral zone as Coffey drives the puck out to Dave Hunter. Hunter back to Paul Coffey. He avoids the check. Stefan makes the save as the Oilers are changing on the fly. Sean Burr with Joe Koser. He's unable to play the pass. Here's Coffey. An injury riddled season for Paul Coffey. Kent Nielsen, the magic man, to Craig McTavish. Oh, Burr almost stealing the puck from McTavish. McTavish with Nielsen and a nice poke check. And Probert starts to center ice. He's taken out by Anderson, and we have seen some of these star oiler forwards do some fine back checking here in the early going. There's no score in the first period, and now the Wings will make a wholesale player change. Kevin Lowe gets the puck ahead of the Oilers to center ice. Here's Messier with Anderson. 
Lewis falls down, Anderson shoots, and Stefan makes the save as Anderson and Messier move right in. A giveaway, Anderson can't get around Beach, then low, a drive, and that deflects wide. Here's the Red Wing captain, Steve Eiserman, clearing the zone. Randy Gregg to Kevin Lowe, giving the puck right back in. Dave Lewis trying to get the puck out, and he's able to. Edmonton has had three shots on Greg Steffen. The Red Wings have had four on Grant Fuhr. Messier knocks the puck down with his glove, takes a shot. Steffen to save with Anderson screening, and then Probert will get a penalty for interfering with Glenn Anderson. The first penalty of the game here in Edmonton, where there's no score. There's Bob Probert. He picks up the two-minute penalty. This is where Edmonton is so effective with the line of Messier Anderson and Kent Nielsen, arguably the quickest line in the world. And once they start putting that pressure on, inevitably you have to take a penalty before you catch up with the play. They're that quick. They put that much pressure on you. The Oilers... Wayne with a power play. Curry in front from Gretzky. Unable to really get a stick on the puck. Charlie Honey back to Yari Curry. Now Gretzky. Coffee at the point. Burr intercepts. And the Red Wings clear it back into the Edmonton zone. As the action continues with no score, Red Wings shorthanded. Budweiser keeps the excitement of the Stanley Cup playoffs going. Good save by Stefan on Paul Coffee. Budweiser in the NHL on ESPN. Good time to pull up with a cold bud and enjoy the excitement from the Northlands Coliseum. Well, Jack Demer, he's, he's using Sean Burr, uh, penalty killing. He's trying to use him against uh, uh, Mark Messier. This will be a real test for Sean Burr. This is uh, on the replay. When you're playing goal and Edmonton's on the power play, you must look for Yari Curry on the offside to your right. And he's going to take that beat. He's Extremely good taking the feed from Gretzky. Robert's penalty coming at 523. Gretzky loses the draw to Eiserman. Norwood smashes the puck to center ice. Huddy goes right over the linesman. Ron Finn. Now Detroit. Higgins over skating the puck. He's yanked down by Coffee, and it's Charlie Huddy who's played well in the playoffs. To the great one. Nice move back to Huddy. He's a bit surprised, but Grant Fuhr looks on as Curry keeps the puck in. Fuhr hasn't been busy lately. Stefan has, even before the Edmonton power play. Huddy from straight away. The shot, the save by Stefan. And Higgins clears to center ice. At one time, the Red Wings had outshot Edmonton 4-1. to one. Now the Oilers have six shots to the Red Wings' four. Coffee trying to move in. Can't get around Jill Delore. There's 48 seconds left in the Red Wings' penalty. Detroit would like to get a face-off here. And veteran referee Bob Myers stops the play. I thought Mike Leuth at Detroit got off to a good start in the first couple of minutes as we look at Glenn Hanlon, who's serving as the backup to Greg Steffen. Oh, easy, Glenn. Don't yawn. You might have to go <laughs> in at any moment. Not the building to yawn in. This is where Edmonton could suffer a little bit in the first game back after a long layoff, the power play. Power plays are very intricate, very complex part of the game, and it takes great coordination, and you can only practice it in truth when, the, when you're using it in the game. Mark Messier, very key to this Edmonton Oilers team. Some would even argue he's as key as Wayne Gretzky is. Well, it's, it's important to take on a greater light once you get to the playoffs, closer checking, and there's a great deal of clutch and grab, and that does not slow him down. Still 43 seconds left in the Oilers' power play. There's no score. Coming up to the seven-minute mark of the opening period. Into the slot, no one there for the Oilers. Here's Darren Veach, the ex-Washington Capital, out to Burr, and finally, Rutzelainen just gives the puck to Messier. Onto the stick of Glenn Anderson. Nielsen on the ice, Smith and Rutzelainen are the point men. Burr slows up Rutzelainen, and the Red Wings doing a good job in the neutral zone here. That's where they're gonna get themselves uh, in trouble, Edmonton, when they stand around watching, and one player is carrying the puck. The other players are watching. They're ahead of the play. As we just saw there, Ken Nielsen going offside. Power play must come up together. The lead man must be the puck carrier and dish off to a player coming with speed from the wing. Kent Nielsen picked up well into the season from Minnesota, former Calgary Flame. There are 11 seconds now left in Bob Probert's interference penalty. Interesting that Edmonton was seventh overall in the league in the power play during the regular season, and they have increased 
their percentage, their success ratio on the power play during the playoffs. But of course, they've really known nothing but success in the playoffs this year since they lost the first game of the first round to the Los Angeles Kings. Of course, they've won eight in a row since then. Rail roots the lane in the X Ranger, driving the puck in. Stefan slows it down. Beach tries to clear. Wings back at full strength. Here's Steve Smith. Nielsen back to Messier. Kent Nielsen shoots, and the save by Stefan on Nielsen. And the Wings Beach clears the puck the length of the ice. This will be an icing as Rutzelainen touches it. And play stopped with 12.20 to go in the first period. There's no score. Edmonton without Craig Muni, their defenseman who had a good year out with a bruised kidney, will probably miss the entire series. Detroit expected to come in injury-free. But their big veteran defenseman, Harold Schneps, is hurt. Also, classy forward Peter Klima out. So the Red Wings, at the last minute, having some injury problems coming in. Now McClellan moves in front, can't get a shot. Now turns, shoots, a block, and a good play in front. But now a loose puck. Stefan falls on it and holds it for a faceoff. I believe it was Adam Oates who made this strong defensive play for the Red Wings. Adam Oates player who has come into his own this year and, and Detroit at this point has gotten off to a, a pretty good start. I mean they're doing not bad. They come into this building as I said the myth precedes the monster sometimes and and when you play Edmonton sometimes you psych yourself out because of the crowd the number of great players that they've had and they've they've set up to Edmonton in a few occasions and that's going to be key for them. They have to get in Edmonton's face and make this a, a tough series for them. Well, the Detroit Red Wings, of course, are a grinding hockey team that really turned it around with Coach Jacques Demers there in his first year. McTavish mixing it up in front with Mel Bridgman. Well, they're trying to show Edmonton that they're going to stay together in this game, in this series. And it seems that Jacques has uh, maybe lit a fire under some, other, some of the other players. McTavish wins the draw. McClellan to Kevin Lowe. The shot goes wide. McClellan digs the puck out. And in front, Bridgman and McTavish want to go. Bob Myers trying to keep the other players out of the minor skirmish. O'Connell knocked down by McClellan. He doesn't like that. And Myers doing a pretty good job getting in Mike Leud and trying to cool things off a bit. Well, that's uh, Mel Bridgman is known for this type of hockey. He learned it in Philadelphia, where maybe they invented it or, or took it another step further. And he's he's added a great deal to the club with with just that. I, I think he's showing the young players that uh, there's no need to be afraid of any situation to get in there and and just make your presence felt. And that's uh, that's the key to Mel Bridgman's career. There'll be coincidental penalties. There's no score. Minor penalties to Bridgman and McTavish here at the eight minute mark. Steve Eiserman two on one with Probert low back. Now Beach up on the play. Bob Probert has Beach in front. He can't get the puck to him. Now Eiserman unable to get around Nielsen and a holding penalty will be called. And I believe the penalty will be against Kevin Lowe and Darren Beach is hurt. He apparently is injured in the face area and very slow to move. And the Red Wings trainer comes out. But keep in mind that Kevin Lowe is going to pick up a two-minute holding penalty here. You speak of minor, minor injuries. Uh, this is something that the Wings can't afford. Heiserman, maybe not the best play here. He gets it in Probert skates. And Bobby Probert, I think, will be a good hockey player. But I don't know if that's the guy you want to put it in his skate on a two-on-one. Beach gets hurt off, off of camera. It's going to be tough if he can't compete for the win. He's been a, a real strong player. And a young guy that came from a very good situation in Washington to a team that struggled last year. Uh, showed a great deal of determination to turn the situation around for Detroit or help turn it around. Here in game one of the Campbell Conference Championship Series, there is no score. Jock DeVere's looking on, patting Darren Veach in the back. He's being helped to the Red Wing dressing room. Veach apparently, Mike Leute, twisted his left knee when he was yanked down by Kevin Lowe. Yes, uh, rather, uh, that, that's a tough play for Detroit and something that didn't appear to be too serious at the time. Now Detroit on the power play, no score. The centering effort to Eiserman broken up, but Gretzky can't clear. Pure. Huddy and Coffey on defense. Messier and Gretzky up front, killing the penalty for Edmonton. Keep in mind, the Oilers are very proficient at coming up with shorthanded goals. Detroit with Norwood and O'Connell on the points. Gallant 
along with Iserman and Probert up front on this power play. Detroit has not fared quite as well in the playoffs with a man advantage as they did during the regular season. Norwood shooting the puck in all the way around the boards to the right point. O'Connell into Gallant. Behind the net to Iserman in front is Probert, but he goes to the point. And that drive by Norwood just wide, and Fuhr holds the puck against the side of the net. Edmonton, you have to be careful with Edmonton when you're on the power play. So many times teams seem to have them penned in their own end, and the puck comes free, and who's at the red line but Wayne Gretzky or Mark Messier, and, and, it, and quickly the, the game can turn around with a shorthanded goal again versus that power play goal you were looking for. That penalty to Kevin Lowe at 8-12 for holding. He has a minute and 10 left in the penalty box. The face-off will come up near Grant Fuhr. Steve Eiserman, the youngest captain in the history of the Detroit Red Wings. Boy, and the history in recent years for the Red Wings has not been that good, but it is a really a glorious history for hockey in the Motor City going back to the days of the venerable Olympia Stadium. Coffee gets the puck. And it's cleared to center ice. Here's Gilles Delorme. Now Ashton trying to break in. Can't get around Messier. Coffee to Huddy. And Edmonton doing a good job killing the penalty. There's ten and a half minutes to go in a scoreless first period. Norwood shoveling it off. Adam Oates gets the puck to David Barr. He centers and Ashton unable to move in front. Nice move by Yari Curry to give the puck to Coffey. The shorthanded Oilers and Norwood intercepts, but behind the play, a penalty is being called. Referee Bob Myers is going to wave off a Red Wing player for hooking, and the player will be Adam Oates. That's the, that's the type of play that uh, you just cannot afford, particularly when you're a defensive team squandering that power play opportunity. Penalties in the offensive zone kill any hockey club, and this is something Detroit must stay away from. Penalties in general, and especially penalties that aren't going to prevent Edmonton from doing some serious damage. The NHL Stanley Cup playoffs now down to the final four, and that was how it went for Adam Oates. Detroit and Edmonton opening this series here tonight. And, of course, it opened between Montreal and Philadelphia with a Flyer victory last night. So the winner in this series will meet either the Flyers or the Canadians. This Edmonton Oiler team, of course, won the Stanley Cup in 1984, again in 1985. And they have reached the Stanley Cup finals in three of the last four years. So they'll either meet the defending cup champions, Montreal, or have a rematch from a couple of seasons ago with Philadelphia if they can get by the upstart Detroit Red Wings. Both teams now are a man short. 9.49, the time of Oates hooking penalty. Zombo to Iserman with Kumpel. Iserman slap shot, he scores! Steve Iserman gives the Red Wings a one to nothing lead, and the Detroit youngster comes up with his fourth Stanley Cup playoff goal. Grant Fuhrer makes somewhat of a mistake here. Ken, I think he was looking, he was looking for something a little lower and moved too soon. Also a turnover at the other blue line. Iserman, when he gets to here, Grant going down, the shot going high. I think that he was just, uh, sometimes you have too much of a book on players. Smith without a stick, and that was a big factor. He may well have been able to deflect that shot. Or put enough pressure on Iserman. You saw Iserman go to him and then leave Smith and, and uh, with a stick I think he might have been able to get something on him. Steve Eiserman now with 13 points in 12 Stanley Cup playoff games. Kevin Lowe ready to come back on. He returns to the ice as action resumes and the Oilers have the power play for a minute and 28 seconds. Oates in the penalty box. Oilers find themselves trailing. Here's Mark Messier up front with Anderson and Nielsen. Coffee at the left point with the puck. Charlie Honey is at the right point. Deflection, the save, and on the rebound. Nielsen scores. Nielsen ties it at one. So often with Edmonton, take a lead, and Edmonton has that ability to come back quickly, strike hard, and take the, the, the momentum that you've gained 
completely away from you. And there you go right back to that penalty that Adam Oates took. Well, that's the, that's the play there. There's nothing, uh, nothing planned there, just a rebound. But the players who are always in the right spot, they're there for a reason. They have an idea of where it's going. Kent Nielsen, perfect, perfect position. Ken Nielsen now with four playoff goals. It is one to one. Only 24 seconds separating the Red Wings goal and then the Oilers equalizer. Stepping around the boards, McSorley intercepts. He's bumped and here's Oates. Breaking out with Ashton and Barr. O'Connell up from the defense as Barr dumps the puck in. Mo LeMay, the ex canuck stopped by Oates. Loose puck and Fjord will play it. Now the Red Wings doing some good board checking, but McSorley with an outlet pass to Mo LeMay. His shot, and that goes wide. Dave Lewis, the veteran back. Giving off to Oates, up to Barr, the much-traveled veteran forward. He's trying to get around Coffey and Camp. There's eight minutes and 30 seconds to go in the first period. McSorley avoids the check. Now Crucial Miski a shot. Step in the save on Mike Crucial Miski. DeLorme whacks the puck to center ice. Oates is hit by Greg. A loose puck for Gilbert DeLorme. DeLorme around Coffey. Now the Red Wings trying to change players as Coffey bumped down by DeLorme. Puck comes loose, kept in at the point by Bridgman. McTavish throws his weight into the Red Wing player, Joe Koser. Now Bridgman muscling along the boards for Detroit with Hunter, and then Bridgman bumped by McTavish. And here's DeLorme again into the Edmonton zone. And back for the puck is Coffey. The Oilers have outshot the Red Wings 10 to 5. It's 1 to 1 with 7.40 left in the opening period. Both teams trying to change players. Lowe having trouble with the puck and plays it back to Gray. Intercepted by Bird. A closer, a backhand shot. He scores! Joe Closer! And the Red Wings, the Cinderella team, take a 2-1 to -one lead. That's where Detroit's going to have to score. They cannot just take a lead and sit on it. They're going to have to continue to come back. Nothing happening here. Just the defense not covering in front of the net just cannot allow the front of the net wide open in front of the net players late in arriving too much time Joe Koser I thought might skate by without ever getting a shot well he's a, he's a player that, that doesn't get a lot of press but he's a, he can put the puck in the net now the Red Wings with a 2-1 to one lead Deacon into Curry it's Curry, Deacon and Gretzky for Edmonton with Rutsalainen and Smith on defense. It's Iserman with a drop pass to Gallant. And a fine save by Grant Fjord. At Edmonton's Northlands Coliseum, the Red Wings lead the Oilers 2-1. to one. The Red Wings scoring first at 10-12. Iserman from Zombo. Then Edmonton tying it 24 seconds later on a power play goal. Nielsen from Messier and Coffey. And now at 12-32, the Red Wings have regained the lead. At center ice, Yari Curry quickly to Roots Alignan. He's stopped, and it's Joe Koser. He stopped Wendell Clark in that Toronto series. But he is just out on the wing and is serving as a scorer, as it turns out, here in the first period. Gretzky to Tikkanen, the youngster from Finland, back to Gretzky, looking for Curry in front. Now it's Roots Alignan moving in. The shot and step in the save. Two on one break. Smith back. O'Connell along with Eiserman. And it's offside. Oh, offside on the right wing is Eiserman. Now behind the play, a mix-up. And it is Bridgman again in the center of things for the Red Wings. And Mel Bridgman, he stirred it up a lot when he was with Philadelphia, and he hasn't ever changed his style. But as long as he's taking someone like Yari Curry off the ice, I think Jacques Demers will take that each and every time. So fast and furious action here in the first period. And the Red Wings are giving the Oilers all they can handle. The Red Wings, of course, only 40 points a year ago, 78 points this season. With Edmonton so often, with Rutsalainen taking that shot from the wing, nobody covering up for him, giving Detroit an obvious superior situation. But to go offside, Ken Wilson, I don't know. No wonder Jacques has gray hairs after all these years of coaching. That's like missing a 
12-inch putt on the 18th hole, and all you have to do is sink it to win. 6.29 to go in the first period. Roughing penalties to Yari Curry and Mel Bridgman. Coincidental penalties. And both teams remain at full strength. Coffee with the punt for the Oilers. 12.32, the time of the tie-breaking goal for the Red Wings. Now Messier, quick little wrist shot, goes wide. Then Anderson hits the face mask of Greg Stefan and play is stopped. Oh, did Glenn Anderson rifle a quick little shot, and Stefan had it go right off the mask. So, how does that feel, Mike Leu? That does not feel very good, Ken Wilson, but Greg Stefan, I've played against Greg a number of times, playing in the North Division. He's, he's about as tough as any goaltender in the league. Something like that is not about to keep him out of this game. Two to one, the Red Wings lead it. The Detroit Red Wings eliminated Chicago four straight, then fell behind to Toronto three games to one, became only the fourth team in history to come back after down three to one. Gozer getting the goal from Burr to break the 1-1 one -one tie. Now it'll be Sean Burr facing off against the Oilers' Mark Messier. This is that very talented line for the Oilers, Messier, Anderson, and Nielsen. They have one goal, the power play goal. Messier keeps the puck in. Backboard is Lee Norwood, former St. Louis Blues and Washington Capitals defenseman. Closer checked by Coffey, and then Burr clears to center ice where Kent Nielsen has the puck. Nielsen to Messier, just whacking it in, and DeLorme goes back. And DeLorme hit by Anderson, and Coffey sends the puck behind the net. Stefan wheels it around the boards to Brent Ashton. He's checked by Huddy. Edmonton aggressively pinching in with their defenseman. Huddy pinned along the boards by Ashton long enough to hold the puck and then a whistle in the crowd goes but not the whistle of Bob Myers. Over five minutes remaining in the first period. After the puck is Ashton. He's creamed by Huddy who goes down. Ashton gets the puck, comes in front and he can't get a shot but here's Dave Barr. Barr centers and Fjord breaks up the play nicely. Oilers trailing two to one. They're trying to change players. LeMay over to McSorley. The ex-Penguin has his shot blocked by Dave Lewis. Randy Gregg has missed some action recently with a bad back, flipping the puck in. Lewis being pursued off the boards for Barr. On to Adam Oates. The other winger is Mark Lamb. The puck comes to center ice. Red Wings have had a lot of puck possession, much more than you would have expected. Well, that's, that's true, but with Edmonton, again, the layoff does hurt you, and they play such a puck control type of hockey. There's 4.15 remaining in the first period. The Red Wings change players as Crucial Niski feeds up on the wing to McSorley. He's looking to get to the bench. Detroit with goals from Iserman and Koser. Edmonton with a power play goal from Nielsen. As McClellan unable to clear the puck in and it's held along the boards for a faceoff as Crucial Niski and Delorme mix it up. Now McClellan along with Probert. And if you're going to go knuckle to knuckle with Bob Probert, you might want to be sure you know that it's Bob Probert. Well, what the Red Wings have in Bob Probert, Joey Kosher, they've also added Lee Norwood, Mel Bridgman. Gives them, as we've mentioned, throughout this game they're not backing down from anybody and it does give them some legitimate size and that's important particularly in the playoffs you know we talked Mike Leute about last season really the maybe the lowest point in the history of Red Wing hockey they started this season with nine newcomers not to mention coach Jacques Demers and they kept making changes as the season went on to improve this hockey well, team. Well, with the year that they had last year, I think that that's what a lot of teams would do. They would bring in some competition and, and force the issue with some of the maybe underachievers that were in their eyes. They've continued to fill the holes they felt needed. Mr. Illich, the, the owner of the Red Wings, has done nothing since he's bought the team but make it a first-class organization, and they're reaping the rewards. Roots the line in long drive. Step in the save. DeLorme hit by Hunter, and then Hunter goes down. Iserman, a nice pass over on the wing to Gallant. He's trying to cut in on Roots the line and is unable to. 
Edmonton getting the puck out. It's McTavish, the former Bruin, with McClellan. McTavish can't turn in too well, covered by Norwood. 3.30 to go in the first period. It is 2-1 to one, Detroit. And Hunter mixing it up with the Red Wings player. Who else? But Iserman, not Bridgman this time, but Iserman. And it, the play was stopped, Mike, when Iserman took a swing at the head of Dave Hunter. And that's when Bob Meyer said, hey, boys, enough is enough. Well, this is some of the youth in Stevie Iserman only because he's such a talented player. The Red Wings cannot afford him in the penalty box for an extended period of time or throughout the season series. But what he's trying to establish is his ground. He's going to command his share of the ice. And if someone's going to check him, he's going to try and go right over the top of them. He's not going to back down. And that's what the playoffs are all about. The closer you get to the Stanley Cup, the more nerve and the greater the courage from everybody. Coincidental penalties to Iserman and Hunter. There is Wayne Gretzky. Boy, it's come to the point where all you have to say is his name. He really couldn't even say anymore. There, the myth is the monster. <laughs> <laughs> He's amazing. Charlie Honey on the charge. The shot knocked down by O'Connell. Steve Zombo gets the puck on the wing. Bridgman, a nice outlet to Burr. Back is Coffee. Burr's drive. Stopped by Grant Fuhr. Over to Essa Tikkanen. Tikkanen with Curry and Gretzky. Here's Curry. Back to Honey. And you see how Edmonton utilizes their defensemen so much in coming up ice. They do, but watch Detroit trapping the Edmonton defensemen with their positional play, their forward staying high, letting the defense maybe going in deep for a chance and catching that outlet transition pass. That's the key, says Jacques Demers, and there'll be penalties again. Joe Coulter and Essa Tietanen. Let me impart some experience here from the Hartford Whaler Quebec series, the, the refereeing philosophy this year. When a game takes on a little ugly tint, they're trying they're trying to control it, but the way they're doing it, their philosophy is they're calling everything. If Detroit can attack some of their better players with the Joey Kosher or Rob Probert, it's it's a mismatch, and Detroit will win in that situation. And that's what happened to us in, in Hartford. It's not the mistake of the referees. It's a mistake of the better player retaliating. It's just a refereeing philosophy. So Glenn Sather's team must be very patient. Well, they just can't afford themselves a Gretzky and Anderson and Asa taken and to get involved and take that push, that extra shove. This is the semifinals, and the key here is winning the hockey game, not showing up who's bravest. And the Oilers trail two to one. As the penalties are coincidental, both teams at full strength, Tim Higgins to Mel Bridgman. Burr, Higgins, and Bridgman. Higgins doesn't see the pass, and Crucial Niski clears. Less than two and a half minutes to go in the first period. Detroit up two to one. Edmonton had a good stretch early in the period, but otherwise they have not shown brightly as you might expect. And again, the point that Mike makes and needs to be made, maybe that eight-day layoff really has taken a little of the luster off Edmonton. Coffee to Gretzky. Always one to look for the play. And Higgins lifts the puck into the crowd and play stopped with exactly two minutes to go in the first period. Those penalties at 17-15. Tikkanen for slashing and Koser for holding. Interesting how we have... The same situation, uh, two penalties in a row. Iserman going off with Hunter, and now with it's a taking it going off with Joey Kosher. Maybe both teams have the same idea. Ready for the faceoff. Anderson kicks the puck in. O'Connell with it. He's on defense with Lewis. Oates up front with Barr and Ashton. Greg takes out Ashton, and Oates backhands the puck in. Detroit with goals from Steve Eiserman and Joe Koser, and they are surprising the Oilers in the first period with a 2-1 to one lead. Messier, oh, can he fly? Messier shoots the puck off the boards for Anderson. A shot does fly. What a pretty play. Randy Gregg, a shot. Stefan the save, and he smothers the puck for a whistle. Greg Stefan, I think, has looked uh, quite sharp given the problems that he's had in the last series with Toronto and somewhat controversy between he and Jacques Demers. It's a tough situation for him to step in after Glenn's played so well. 
But he does look very sharp to me. He's in the right spot, following the puck through the screen as you did on that situation. This is what Detroit has been maybe blessed with. Good goaltending throughout the playoffs. As we told you earlier, Darren Veach is in the Detroit dressing room. He has injured his left leg, and the Red Wings are really not interested in saying much more about it. When you get to the playoffs, teams tend to be a bit closed mouth about injuries. Nielsen stealing the puck from Lewis. In front nicely. Craig shot just wide. Bridgman clears the puck out. Detroit getting a bit careless there. Well, Detroit, they're not error-free in their hockey style, and sometimes you can sit on it a little too much. Just over a minute to go in the first period. Nielsen a blind centering pass, and Lewis clears. Here's Rutsalainen. Just backhanding the puck in. Anderson will try to put some pressure on O'Connell. O'Connell knocked down. Messier hit by Bridgman. McSorley with a loose puck. Gives it to Messier with Bridgman all over Messier. And finally, Bridgman will get a penalty. Mel Bridgman. Well, we'll check it. Either Bridgman or Lewis. It might have been right next to Bridgman after he knocked Messier down. Lewis knocked down one of the other Oilers. But at any rate, the Red Wings are going to have to be shorthanded. Very good job by Mel Bridgman. Mark Messier so strong. I don't know if Sean Burr, who Jacques Demers wants to, him to play against, and there's the penalty off of the lower right. He wants Sean Burr to play against Messier. I don't know if he's strong enough to handle him, but maybe he they and Bridgman can contain the power forward, Mark Messier. So the Red Wings, with 44 seconds to go in the first period, are going to be shorthanded. Keep in mind that the Edmonton Oilers have defeated the Detroit Red Wings 13 straight times. In fact, the Red Wings, in the last 20 games they have played against the Oilers, have managed just one tie and one victory. Interference at 19-16, the time of the penalty to the veteran Dave Lewis. Gretzky gets the faceoff. Roots the line and over to Steve Smith. To Curry. Over to Gretzky. Boy, just a set-up pass to Gretzky. Crucial Niski. Half a minute to go. Nice work by DeLorme. And Gretzky ends up with it. In front to Smith. A shot. Great save, Stefan. He doesn't see the puck. Then a save by Norwood on Curry. Fine check by Burr. And then he's smashed. Gretzky is down. He is hurt. Play is finally stopped. Wayne Gretzky finally getting up. Now Crucial Niski and Smith want to get at Jill Delorme as Gretzky does what Gretzky does best. He moves out of the way and lets the big guys go. Well, that's what we're talking about. Wayne Gretzky, does, and he knows that he doesn't want to get involved in something like that. That's not his game. And maybe that's Gretzky's greatest asset is the way that he plays to his attributes and stays away from things that are of no interest to him. These two teams throwing their weight around in the first period, and certainly it would behoove the Red Wings to use the body a lot and try to slow down the Edmonton Oilers. Not many teams have ever slowed down the Oilers in this building. That's Crucial Niski and Tim Higgins. Well, this is another instance of Detroit. You have to admire the way that they've stick, stuck together in this particular period and the way they've done it throughout the playoffs. What Detroit has going for them down 3-1 to Toronto and coming back to win the series, that gives the team so much confidence. Great save by Greg Steffen. Couldn't have played it any better. Top of the crease, moving with the pass. Let's see, what happens. Let's see what happens to Gretzky here. I think Wayne just loses his win. Uh, stiff check, and, and you have to attack Gretzky like that. If you want to uh, have some success against him, you can't lay back and let him come to you. You know, there are those who say that most teams don't even want to check Gretzky. A lot of players in deference just won't hit him, but I believe it was Sean Burr who really gave him a ride. Well, the word in Edmonton from people who've been watching Detroit play throughout the season and in the playoffs is that at one point in the series, Sean Burr will have each and every member of the Edmonton Oilers infuriated with him to the point where Maybe they will take a bad penalty at, a, at the wrong time. Well, Tim Higgins' work for the first period is done. Detroit, meanwhile, keep in mind, with 13 seconds to go in the opening period, is playing shorthanded. And you've got to know, Mike Liuth, that Jacques Demers has gone to the Bob Johnson 
playbook a little bit and trying to learn from what the Flames did a season ago in an earlier round than this in eliminating Edmonton. Well, I don't think that there's... Uh, uh, you have to be a smart man if you're willing to learn from somebody else's success. And Bob Johnson does have a strategy that, that is employable against the Edmonton Oilers. And he is going to take away the middle of the ice and he's going to treat the Edmonton players, Curry, Gretzky, Anderson, with a little bit of the rough going of playoff hockey. Now down to 13 seconds to go in the period and the Red Wings lead it two to one. Pass just too far for Mark Kumpel. Fjord has to play the puck. Smith picked up a penalty for Edmonton and both teams are a man short as the first period here at the Northlands Coliseum comes to a close. Mike Liutz, Detroit has the lead. My impression is that when this game started, the crowd was in a roar. Edmonton had a chance to come out and fly. Detroit played well the first two minutes. And other than for maybe three or four minutes of the period where Edmonton, I thought, played well, it was a very good period for Detroit. Well, what Detroit did by scoring the first goal and then retaking the lead was they took the crowd out of the game for Edmonton. You step on the ice, the crowd is roaring, and the team wants to go. That's the best remedy for the, for the visiting team is to score and take the lead and put the people back on, in their seats. Detroit played well. The layoff, you have to go back to the layoff, even though Edmonton outshot the Red Wings. Not as sharp as they, they can be. And let's not forget, it's only one period. Scoring in the period, Eiserman and Koser for Detroit, Nielsen for Edmonton. After 20 minutes, the Detroit Red Wings 2, the Edmonton Oilers 1. Well, uh, Peter, <laughs> after face off, he got the puck in the corner and he came around the net and, and uh, he tried to shoot it once and he made a save and the puck was just laying out there and uh, I saw the puck and uh, I just tried to, you know, shoot it hard as I can and uh, after I shot it, he made a save, save, I thought, you know, Peter put it in afterwards because I didn't see where the puck was after I touched it and uh, I guess it looked like in the replay that the Coley, Coley lost and he put it in. It was a scramble, and it was under uh, defenseman Chris Chelios in front of the net, and uh, I didn't really know exactly where it was. And I still don't know how it went in. If I put it in, if uh, if they actually popped it in, uh, I'll have to look at that. Hey, that super slow-mo reverse angle is great, isn't it? We'll have it again tomorrow night at the Spectrum. Philadelphia wins game one, four to three in over. And Mike Lear. All right, Tom Mees, the first thing we should point out is the penalties that were called at 1947 of the first period. Gilles Delorme of Detroit got a two-minute roughing penalty. Steve Smith of Edmonton, a two-minute roughing penalty and a two-minute charging penalty, creating a shorthanded situation for the Edmonton Oilers. Tim Higgins got a 10-minute misconduct, and Edmonton's Mike Krusielniski also earned a 10-minute misconduct, all of those penalties in 1947. The scoring at 10-12, Iserman from Zombo, then Edmonton the power play goal at 10-36, Nielsen from Coffee and Messier, and Joe Kosher from Burr scoring at 12-32 to give Detroit the 2-1 lead. Both teams are short-handed here. Lewis of Detroit went in earlier. He has a minute 16 to go in his penalty. And then Smith's penalty, a minute 47 to run. And the second period is underway. Both teams again at this point are one man short. Edmonton with Huddy head manning to Anderson. Flying down the left wing, Messier. Puck flipped in wide of the goal. Kumpel trying to take out Messier. And he is a raging bull. He's stopped by Sean Burr. Nice pass. Comes over to Mark Kumpel, a shot, and Grant Fuhr, the save on Kumpel. This is Messier. First minute of the second period. Burr to Norwood. He moves right in. Lee Norwood shoots, and he misses the net. Glenn Anderson can't clear. And Detroit all over the Oilers here in the first minute of the middle period. Half a minute, Detroit will be at full strength. Coffee almost hands the puck to Iserman, then covers up. Mike O'Connell giving the puck to Coffey. He gives it to Glenn Anderson, who's poke checked by Gerard Gallant. Over the line with Iserman trailing. Iserman can't get the shot away. Now Gallant tries to move in front. Ten seconds until Lewis returns, and Huddy whacks the puck off the glass, and it sails into the crowd. Play stop, one minute, 11 seconds into period number two. Charlie Huddy, the bearded veteran, 
Edmonton defense in the last couple of years at times looked like he was on the outs here in Edmonton, but he's roared back and played exceptionally well in these 1987 Stanley Cup playoffs. Five seconds, and Steve Eiserman and the Red Wings will have a power play that will last for 31 seconds. These Detroit Red Wings just about as much an underdog as a team can possibly be, and they lead 2-1 to one here in Edmonton in the opening game of the Campbell Conference Championship Series. The winner, of course, will go on against either Philadelphia or Montreal in the Stanley Cup Finals. Here's Kevin Lowe. Lewis back on. Detroit with a man advantage. And the Wings will have to start out in their own zone. Zombo being pressured by McTavish leaves the puck for Norwood. Iserman is up front along with Probert and Gallant. Here's Iserman trying to weave through the middle. Steve Zombo checked by Dave Hunter. Ten seconds and the Edmonton penalty will be over. Here's Gallant. Off the stick of Greg. Probert knocks the puck down. He and Hunter bump and Iserman shoots it in. Deaconin was serving the Smith penalty, the first of the two penalties, and now the play is called, and the faceoff will come back out into the Edmonton zone as both teams again are back at full strength. Well, that was quite an experience for me, Ken Wilson racing up the stairs. You had an interesting first intermission on Canadian television. Where were you? Were you downtown Down, Edmonton or downtown. were you still in the building? It felt like downtown when I had to come back. You're in good shape. Come on. Not, not two weeks after the season. The shape lose, leaves you quite quickly. Detroit sticks with the same game plan here now, I would assume. Well, sure. I mean, they have to be aware of Edmonton getting their legs and coming out very quickly. They don't want to get scored on the first six, seven, eight minutes of this period. Detroit putting the pressure on. Curry can't control. Lewis a shot, and it deflects wide. Iserman centers. Gerard Gallant unable to get the backhand drive away, and as Iserman skates by, Grant Fuhr comes up with a loose puck. Well, Grant Fuhr, Mr. Reliable in his sixth NHL season, and... Doc Demers knows as well as anyone that Grant Fuhr can really serve as a great, great support of this Edmonton team. Well, he's played so well, and, and he continues to play well, but he has his, his moments also, and I think that Jacques wants to put pressure on Grant Fuhr. Here's O'Connell, a shot off the blocker of Fuhr. Robert into the corner, trying to pull away from Curry, and Curry, the finesse player, gets the puck. Greg deflects it to Gretzky. Back to Greg, and nice back-checking by Gallant. Now one-on-one, -on -one, Iserman against Lowe. Iserman drops the puck, and the Oilers take possession. Tikkanen just shoots the puck in, and a save by Stefan. Both teams at full strength. Period two, which has been scoreless, and that's an offside play. And there's a break in the action with the Red Wings leading the Oilers 2-1. to one. This crowd has really calmed down here in Edmonton since this one started. Well, that's what Detroit wants. They don't want to get this crowd too anxious. They want to use the crowd and Joe Lewis to their advantage. And that crowd is something special. At center ice, Barr over skating, but gets the puck to DeLorme. DeLorme on defense with Norwood. Up front for Detroit, Oates, Barr, and Ashton. And the Red Wings go deep in their own zone again. Barr, bothered by Hunter, but steers the puck to the neutral zone. Huddy shoots it right back in. McClellan, McTavish, and Hunter for Edmonton. Barr can't control. Here's Coffee on defense with Huddy. Shooting the puck back deep into the Detroit zone. And play is stopped. And the offside is called against the Edmonton Oilers. Now they're going to call it an icing. They say that Edmonton shot the puck in from just on their side of the neutral center red line. There is a tough customer for these Edmonton Oilers, the former Penguin, Kevin McClellan. That's the player that Glenn Sather will send out there if Detroit wants to mix it up and push anybody around. He's uh, been a good find for Edmonton through the years. And he can score goals. And quite often that's the type of player who will score a big goal for you as the playoffs wind down and get closer to the Stanley Cup. There's no question one of the things the Red Wings have done tonight is 
They've agitated Edmonton. They've taken the body. They've checked better than Edmonton has, at least on the puck. And what's happened is you, you're testing Edmonton. Is Edmonton really a tough team when they have to be one? Or can they turn the other cheek and keep their star players on the ice, too? And that's the question that's being asked here in game one. And the Red Wings are posing the question. Well, they certainly are. More than that, I think that they're trying to keep them off balance after the layoff and keep them rusty, as it were. Nielsen shoots the puck in. Defenseman Rick Zombo. Up to Sean Burr. Detroit on the move. Pass too far for Bridgman. Rootsalainen gets the puck first, hands it to Bridgman. He centers, and Burr deflects it off the glass behind Fjord. Glenn Anderson, rink wide for Kent Nielsen. Messier with Rootsalainen and Anderson. Here's Anderson, the former Denver University player. And then a centering pass for Nielsen, blocked by goaltender Greg Stephan. He had to anticipate that a little. Pretty to watch the Edmonton squad when they're playing like that. Messier's line. Greg has been, he's been solid all game thus far. Messier, a shot high. Puck out to center ice. Gerard Gallant with Probert and Burr. Gallant to Probert, a shot. Oh, what a great save by Grant Fuhr. Now Burr, a drive and a glove save by Fuhr. And Grant Fuhr moments ago came up with a best save here in game one. Second period of play and Detroit is on top two to one. Ninth division championship banner hanging here at the Northlands Coliseum and they've got a few banners up from the rafters here in Edmonton. Boy what a save that Fuhr made on Probert. That's Mike. the type of goaltending you need. Down 2-1 big save keeps the team in keeps everything going the way that they discussed it in the dressing room. Charlie Huddy to Messier. Huddy and Coffey are on defense. This is Coffey. He'll play really like a fourth forward much of the time. He will, although he's short. He, he has not scored yet in the playoffs, which is as much a surprise as anything in the playoffs. Gretzky. Keeping it. Quick shot to save. And Curry can't get a good shot away on the rebound. Huddy keeping the puck in. Ooh, and he shoots it just wide. Coffey keeps it in. Gallant. And finally, Probert slaps the puck away. Detroit changing. Tikkanen it. Just past the five-minute mark of the second period. Two to one, Detroit. Norwood up to Ashton. It's far for Detroit. He's spun around by Tikkanen. Then Adam Oates. Back to the point to Gilles Delorme. The deflection and the save by Pure and Tikkanen. Clears the puck out to Gretzky. Coffee head man. Gretzky would be offside. He lets the Detroit player shoot the puck in, and this will be an icing against the Detroit Red Wings. Faceoff will come back near Greg Stephan. Well, I'm very surprised, Mike Leo, that Edmonton has not had more success against Detroit, and you have to be impressed with the way the Red Wings have played here so far. Too often, the league and all the fans have not given the Norris division enough due even though this game is, is obviously in its early stages still. Edmonton is doing two things wrong. They're not covering the points in their end, and it's giving the Detroit, any time the puck bounces loose, it's giving the Detroit defenseman ample opportunity to keep the puck in deep. That, and they're not, uh, when the defenseman's going in deep for them, they're not covering up for them. McClellan checked by O'Connell. Hunter. Off the skate of teammate Kevin Lowe. Ashton stopped. O'Connell will circle. Neither team has scored here in the second period of the opening game of the Campbell Conference Championship, a best of seven series. McTavish spinning down. Ashton. He gets the puck back at the Edmonton line. He shoots off the blocker of Fjord. McTavish clears the zone, takes a hit. O'Connell handles the puck well to Adam Oates. He's got Barr heading for the net, and Oates shot just wide, and he took a brutal check from Kevin Lowe. He paid the price. Edmonton in possession. Greg DeLow too far. Joe Koster just leaves the puck. Greg is hit, tries to get it in, and does with the help of McTavish. Lee Norwood. Nielsen after him. Up on the wing to Koster. He just gets it out, and here come the Oilers. Nielsen with Messier. 
Messier can't cut in on Norwood. Nielsen with a bouncing punt to Steve Smith. His shot knocked down in front by Delore. Now the Detroit player falls on the puck and the whistle stops play. 12.46 to go. It's the middle period here in Edmonton and Detroit has a one goal lead. Detroit has come out, Mike, in the second period and really tested Grant Fuhr. Well, they've had their chances and Edmonton still breaking down. Let's get back to the point that they've been off, off the ice for eight days, nine days, and that has its effects. Detroit, here in this period, has had seven shots on goal. The Oilers have had only one. Edmonton shooting the puck right back in. Knocking it down with a high stick is Anderson to teammate Kent Nielsen, and that stops play with 12.25 to go in the second period. So often, the part of hockey or any sport, moving without the puck, moving without the ball, and that's the part of the game, the checking, the hard work, that's the part that is tough to practice. And it's the game shape and the game conditions that, that you really hone those skills. And, and that's what you're seeing, Edmonton. If they do break down, it, it's a lapse by one player at a critical time. For Glenn Sather's team, that's one of their points. They haven't played in eight days. On the Red Wings side, they just played the night before last. So they had very little time to rest and or prepare for Edmonton. But they have that momentum and that game shape, that game toughness. Smith for the Oilers. Flips it in wide. O'Connell back. Messier rushes. Nielsen intercepts. Burr stops Nielsen. Then Nielsen steals the puck. Burr hit in the face. Play continues. And now is stopped by Bob Myers. I'm not sure if it was the puck, Mike Leute, or a stick that, that caught Sean yeah, Burr. Yeah, I couldn't tell either. But uh, any time a player is in the f hit in the face, that area, although he does have that shield, that ever-present shield, as we see now in the league, quite possibly saved him from some severe damage. I don't think there's any question off that angle as what it was. Watch Kent Nielsen stick. Well, we won't see it from there. It looked like he took it in the throat is where he took it. He'll be all right. And the Red Wings lead the Oilers two to one. Off coming up near the Detroit goal. Edmonton's always had great support here since they turned their franchise around. Sometimes that crowd can ignite a team. Gretzky aggressively to Curry and a shot blocked by Delore. Huddy over to Coffey. A deflection wide by Tikkanen. Gallant can't clear the puck out. Here's Delore run to the board by Tikkanen. Eiserman gets the puck. He's stopped. Norwood ahead to Probert. On the wing to Gerard Gallant. Eisenman breaks in front. But Gallant can't center. It's the great one. Wayne Gretzky looking for Curry. He knows Coffee's in the neighborhood. And Curry's pass picked up by Tikkanen. Into the corner to Curry. Behind the net. Who else? Here it is. The shot. The save. And play is stopped as Gallant and Tikkanen mix it up. And then DeLorme of Detroit steps in the way. And Gerard Gallant is red hot, and there'll be more penalties. I think you have to watch up off of Gretzky's reaction, possibly a broken stick here. He gets it in a great spot. Doesn't get much on the shot. Good save by Greg Stephan with him all the way. But Gretzky frustrated, breaking it, throwing his stick away. Uh, so often that stick will break at a crucial time, although with a tightened hockey stick. Usually it's your wrist will break before that hockey stick. Budweiser keeps the action going here on ESPN. Have a cold bun and enjoy the NHL Stanley Cup playoffs. For all you do, this buzz for you. I think you see Ken Wilson, some of the Edmonton Oilers, just a little frustrated. Jerry Curry, and the other players looking at the referee after the whistle. Detroit playing very well in that aspect. Not taking too many penalties, but agitating just enough. Detroit with a two to one lead on first period goal by Steve Eiserman and Joe Kosher. The only Edmonton goal came in between the two Detroit tallies. Kent Nielsen scored on an Oiler power play. Tekenen gets a two minute roughing penalty. Gallant 
also picks up a two-minute roughing penalty here at 8.45 of the scoreless second period. So the coincidental penalties, both teams at full strength, a burst of speed. Moving in is Kumpel. You're the save. Curry trying to get the puck to Gretzky. Can't. Bird to Lamb. Huddy in the way of Mark Lamb. Coffee trying to slow up Sean Byrne. He does a nice job with his skate. Mo LeMay with Gretzky and Curry. LeMay taking Tekin and spot on the left wing. Kumpel yanks down LeMay. And there'll be a penalty. A penalty coming up to the Detroit Red Wings, Mark Kumpel. There's 10.33 left. It is the second period in Edmonton, and the Oilers trail the Red Wings 2-1. So often a player hasn't played in the playoffs and gets a chance, a little overexcited. Maybe he takes a penalty he didn't have to take. Puck seemingly harmless in the corner. Not much of a play or a chance for Edmonton. Kumpel reaches out and grabs the man going to the net. Here we'll get a look again at the Oilers' power play, as we mentioned. Edmonton's goal coming with the man advantage. They've been successful over 22% of the time on the power play in the playoffs. Detroit, by comparison, just over 18% of the time. Burr stopped by Steve Smith. Kent Nielsen with the puck. The Red Wings with DeLorme and Norwood on defense in front of Greg Steffen. Nielsen loses the puck. DeLorme clears it. And the Red Wings are going to send Iserman out up front with Bridgman now. Ruth Salanen, the crafty veteran Edmonton defenseman, leading the power play to Messier. With Anderson and Nielsen. Smith, Nielsen, Ruth Salanen. Nielsen again. Anderson and Messier are in front. Oh, DeLorme, a big whack to the side of Anderson in front of Stephan. Here is Kent Nielsen. Over to Smith, and DeLorme will end up with a puck. He clears it the length of the ice. There's a minute to go in the Mark Kumpel penalty. Rosalina, sometimes the Oilers, maybe too many finesse players, not enough players taking the direct route. Ball, Coffee. The shot seemed to hit Glenn Anderson. Oh, Coffee a drive. Here's Messier a shot and a save by Stephan. And Mark Messier says, I have the whole upper part of the net. And, well, he just couldn't get it over Stephan. Well, there you see some of the Edmonton players. Messier in the right place. He's not involved in the direct play. But should the puck come to him or a rebound, a deflection in this case, the point is that the players are always in an angle to collect that rebound, maybe an errant shot, and still work it at the net. Very skilled offensively, and for a reason. There is Lee Norwood. He played for Jacques Tavares in St. Louis. He is a Detroit native playing for the hometown Red Wings. Also a player that, as we mentioned before, gives the Red Wings a little size, maybe a little grit in the corners where they need it. Detroit is still shorthanded. They will be for another 44 seconds. Two to one. The Red Wings have the lead. And certainly to this point, most any observer would have to call the way things have gone in this opening game of the Campbell Conference Championship Series surprising. Ball coffee. Quick shot. Step in the save. The rebound is still loose. And finally, it's smothered and not by Stephan. You may have seen it still loose. But referee Bob Myers lost sight of the puck and correctly blows his whistle. With Detroit, if you look at the regular season, Detroit lost all three games, but 4-3, 5-3, not that much of a surprise at this point. Stephens scrambles, both Edmonton players in front of the net, Gretzky always on the outside, sniffing where that puck's going to go. And Messier, the strong man in the middle for the Oilers. Well, you make a point. The Red Wings played twice here. They lost in October 4 to 3 here, and they lost in March here 6 to 3. Edmonton played at Joe Louis Arena once. That was in January, and the Oilers won that game 5 to 3. So your point's well taken. The Oilers really were never able to blow out the Red Wings. And that's maybe a little different philosophy. The Oilers are more interested in winning the hockey games than when the lead would get comfortable or secure. They don't see Wayne Gretzky as often as you used to see them. You see the third and fourth line 
playing that checking role. All season long, the Oilers have tried to be more defensive, more we than I. That was the philosophy of Glenn Sather from the very start of the season. They sometimes at home have tended to get a little individualistic, have tended to open up a little bit more than Glenn Sather and John Muckler would like. Certainly tonight that isn't the case. And the question would be just how rusty are they? How well are they playing? I'm sure most Edmonton Oilers observers, Mike, would say that the Oilers are sluggish and rusty tonight. Well, and, and I don't think that they would argue. The point is that the game could still wind up 5-3 for Edmonton at this point. You never know when that rust is going to leave you and the dynamite explodes. Detroit is still shorthanded. Here's Gretzky. Coffee. Oh, and a nice block by Bridgman, the veteran. Five seconds, and Kumpel will return to the ice. Coffey with a head of steam. Something we haven't seen much lately from Coffey. The shot, step in the save. Detroit, back at full strength. Greg, a shot, goes wide. Here's Yari Curry to Mark Messier. Crowd reacted as Delorme and Coffey mix it up. And Greg, a shot that deflects wide. Boy, a lot of clutching and grabbing in front of that Detroit net. Here come the wings. Oates. Ooh, to Ashton. He just fails to break in alone. Centering effort. Gretzky there, and Fjord picks the puck out of thin air. There's exactly eight minutes remaining in the second period. This period has been scoreless, and the Red Wings lead 2-1. to one. Oilers and Red Wings meeting for the first time ever in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Keep in mind, Edmonton has defeated Detroit 13 straight times. But when that streak ends, it can be a very positive thing for the Detroit Red Wings, in, if, in fact, it does end. Still almost eight minutes remaining in the middle period. Kevin Lowe beat to the puck by Brent Ashton. Then Sean Burr is checked by McTavish. Bit of a cross check by Detroit defenseman Rick Zombo. And the Red Wings ice the puck. Greg will touch it. And that'll stop play with 7.31 remaining in period two. You certainly, you certainly can't think that the Detroit Red Wings are playing with it like a team that is 0-13 in their last 13 games against uh, the Oilers. Greg Steffen, that extra padding, so often a goaltender will take a shot on the ankle. And what the pad companies have done is they've just extended his pads and most pads. Uh, Grant Fuhrer has it. Fuhrer is somewhat less than what Stefan has. It just depends on whether an individual has been hurt in a certain location and he'll add some padding. Reminds you of the days that Tony Esposito had everything but the kitchen sink hooked onto his pads. Including some webbing between his legs which the <laughs> league didn't like. Red Wings clear the puck out. McClellan leaves it for Rootsalainen. Over to Steve Smith. Back to Rejo Rootsalainen. Edmonton now is outshot Detroit 19-16. They've had the last three shots on goal. And it's 2-1 to one Detroit. Oates. Ashton. Smith for Edmonton. A very, very tight checking second period. That plays right into the hands of the Red Wings. And they're able to check tightly with the lead. That's what they wanted, as Mike Leut pointed out. The Red Wings wanted the lead. They figured if they could get the lead, they could really play their game, and they have done it. Hunter check. McTavish boarded by Zombo. Pinned to the boards. Then Barr steps into Hunter. And Zombo and McTavish in a real war. Then McClellan comes in. Barr hits him. And here's Hunter hit by O'Connell. This is quite a ways from wide open finesse hockey. McClellan wants the last shove on Barr. And those are pretty close quarters for a long time. And you can understand tempers flaring. Well, that's the part of hockey that I don't think that you can control with the officiating. That's always going to happen as long as they can control the all-out wars and bench clearing. Well, this is hockey. This is the NHL, and this is the Stanley Cup for semifinals. No team is going to come into the situation and just roll over and die, and, and the Red Wings are playing 
like they should. They didn't come all the way up here to be embarrassed, and they're giving Edmonton everything they can handle at this point. Boy, Rick Zombo, who hasn't played all that much, getting a chance with Harold Schneps on the shelf. Has to be worn out after that encounter. Well, particularly with Darren Beach out seemingly for the rest of the game. You drop down to five defensemen, and now you're asking a few players, one Dave Lewis, a little bit older, and Rick Zombo, who hasn't played, to do a little more than what they've been used to. Beach hurt his left knee in the first period as Kevin Lowe picked up a holding penalty. Beach had to be helped out. He is not returned and not expected to return. Just over six minutes left in a scoreless second period. Messier to Nielsen. Checked on the play by Norwood. It's Messier, quick shot, and a fine save by Stefan. He may have been screened just a bit. Sean Burr is hit. Ian Nielsen mix it up. Greg shoots the puck in, knocked right back out. Kent Nielsen, one of the finest finesse players in the game, to Kevin Lowe. In front, Nielsen knocked down by Gallant. Here's Probert hit by Lowe. Loose bucket center ice and Greg is there. Lowe for Edmonton. Five and a half minutes to go in this period. Mark Messier looking for skating room and the Oilers have not been given very much skating room by Detroit. Lowe checked at center ice by Gerard Gallant right after the play and the crowd unhappy about that. There'll be no icing. They say the Oilers could have played the puck at center ice. Both teams are changing on the fly. Anderson ahead to Messier. Then McSorley takes out Bridgman, allows Anderson to move in on the right wing. He can't get away from Joe Kosher. And the Red Wings ice the puck. And there is 4.53 showing on the clock here at the Northlands Coliseum. And this crowd is getting a bit testy, Mike. They're getting impatient. They're getting agitated about the way the Red Wings are checking their Oilers. And that's what the Red Wings want. They want to not only frustrate the Edmonton Oilers, but they want to frustrate their fans. And that's, that's why you see Detroit, if there's any question, they'll ice the puck and they feel they have the center ice personnel that can win the draw in their end of the ring. Don't forget, tomorrow night, right back here on ESPN, it'll be Game two of the exciting Wales Conference Final. Philadelphia going one up on Elka Sinisalo's overtime goal last night and the Flyers at home tomorrow night against Montreal, the defending Stanley Cup champions. It's at 7.30 Eastern time tomorrow night here on ESPN. Ken Wilson along with Mike Leuze, the Hartford Whalers outstanding goalie. Glad to be here in Edmonton for the opening game of this Campbell Conference Championship Series. Tom Meese, of course, is with us as always. Lamb against Crucial Niski. Detroit winning the draw. Lewis. Two veterans, Lewis and O'Connell on defense. Up front, Lamb. Kumpel and Higgins, a line, a combination that has not seen much action. Higgins and LeMay mixing it up along the near boards as the puck is lifted high to center ice. A bouncing puck, and Lewis hurries back. He gets it out, and here's Roots aligning. Detroit has brought this pace practically to a standstill. That's exactly what they wanted to do. Smith going down. Myers, the referee hit. Lamb with a puck. His weak shot turned aside by Fuhr and Higgins going into the goal post. And that stops play as the net behind Fuhr comes ajar and then McSorley and Higgins have words. You can see, try to illustrate Detroit's philosophy, if they were down a goal or two, how difficult it would be to stay in the mode that they're in where they're not really trying to score goals here. and They're really bottling up the Oilers getting the Oilers involved in some rough play. Steve Smith way out of position to try to deliver some physical uh, stuff himself, taking himself out to try and maybe even the score. And, and that's what Detroit wants. And they'll, they'll wait for that situation and try and make it 3-1 on a turnover or a defensive breakdown. All of the scoring in the first period, Edmonton has never led in this game. Their only goal, a power play goal by Kent Nielsen after Steve Eiserman gave the Red Wings a 1-0 lead and then Joe Kosher scored for Detroit to give them the lead. Detroit in this period 
after being outshot in the first period, has actually come back to outshoot the Oilers by a margin of eight to six. The Oilers eight wins in a row without Paul Coffey scoring any points at all. What will happen if he takes off? He has had an injury riddle this season. Burr in front, and the net comes loose again as Coffey takes out Kosher, and there'll be a face-off near Grant Fuhr. So often that injury, injured season and injury plague season will continue through the playoffs, or maybe some of the injuries are still lingering from the season. A player that skates so well has to have its effect. Boy, That's Coffee had to be alert. The way Detroit kind of worked looked like a set play. Well, anytime you can beat the centerman from a draw on his own end and step around him with control of the puck, that's an excellent scoring opportunity. And then add the fact that you have a Probert or a Gallant going to the net on the opposite side. It looks like goal from here. Steve Eiserman ready to face off against Mark Messier. Keep in mind, before the game, Jock Demers, the Red Wings outstanding coach, said he wanted to have Sean Burr on the ice against Messier. But of course, the last shift, the last player alignment goes to the home team, in this case, Edmonton. Anderson, a blast, and the save by Stefan. DeLorme hands the puck to Messier. McClellan in front with Anderson, and Anderson's shot is stuffed back. Eisenman gets the puck out, fails to reach Gallant. Messier hits Probert. Here's Kevin McClellan. 3.40 remaining in period two. Messier to Charlie Huddy, a wrist shot wide. Glenn Anderson. Messier. Boy, the Oilers just are not getting free. Now Messier a chance to save, and McClellan is stopped on the rebound attempt by Greg Steffen. So often a goaltender, the replay comes up. If it comes up, we can see Greg Steffen with it with the save but not only that staying with the rebound that's the key to goaltender being sharp and he stays with the puck now McClellan and Probert a pair of number 24s would like to get at each other here they go Bob Probert and Kevin McClellan and the referee Bob Myers says move back oh and then McClellan tries to get a little poke with the left interesting thought here with Messier's line he's taken Nielsen off that line and put McClellan on there and I think that stay there Glenn stay the coach of the Oilers has reacted to the way at uh, Detroit has played thus far Nielsen not as effective in this type of hockey and McClellan a guy as you can see will make a little room for himself Robert is very strong a very good fighter and Kevin McClellan is proving that he deserves to be in the big leagues too now Probert's really going, and Probert's reputation really coming on here. Boy, he got an arm loose, Mike Leud, and Bob Probert says, I am a heavyweight. And so often, you hate to think that it has that much of an effect on one team or the other, but when the heavyweights square off, so often it can have a detriment to one team, detrimental effect, and such a bolt of confidence for a team a young team like the Red Wings it has been so clear here in the first two periods that the Edmonton Oilers are being tested physically and during the first intermission the media here at the Northland Coliseum talking about that and the Edmonton people saying you know we don't know if the Oilers are as tough physically as their front office feels they are well here's Greg Stephan you can see he has to be alert to make that save and, and so often getting hit high in the shoulder, the chest. It's difficult with that headgear. Arms flying, people in front of you to pick up where that rebound goes. But he's been all over the Edmonton Oilers thus far. Greg Steffen, a bit of a surprise choice after Glenn Hall Hanlon was so superb in the Norris Division Championship Series against Toronto. But Jacques Demers, who is in the Campbell Conference Championship Series for the second straight season, has a good idea what he wants to do, and he goes with Stefan here in game one. You remember, in game, uh, or rather the Toronto series, they had a, somewhat of a falling out, a miscommunication in how uh, Jacques wanted to state that Glenn or, would play the remainder of the series. Greg Stefan took it a little bit hard, a little bit too hard, but you can see when it gets down to the semifinals how quickly professionals can put their differences aside. 
let the boss boss and the player play. 16-36, five-minute fighting penalties to Kevin McClellan and Bob Grobert. Lee Norwood to Tim Higgins. Iserman. Now Gallant replaced by Kosher. And it's Greg falling down. McSorley and Joe Kosher are going to go. I'm sure that's why Kosher came on to play against McSorley. Meanwhile, Tikkanen away from the play with Iserman. And they're separated as Kosher and McSorley are split apart by the two linesmen, Ron Finn and Sweet Knox. And the crowd feels that Marty McSorley was one up in that confrontation. Detroit has to be just a little careful. I don't think that they should be getting carried away. They've made their point. They've told Edmonton, and this is how it starts. This, uh, I think, McSorley, he's going out of his way to come to see Joey Kosher. But Detroit has made their point that, Edmonton, you may be more talented, and in the end, you may win this series. But we're 20 men just like you people are, and we will not be embarrassed, and we are coming to play. And the Red Wings have played, and they lead 2-1 to one with 2.59 to go in the opening period. Detroit hoping to get one win out of this first two games here in Edmonton and hoping that, I think realistically, that they might steal one from the Oilers here in the opening game with the Oilers not having played in eight days after sweeping the Winnipeg Jets. One would think that that would be the game, if any, Detroit would be able to win in Edmonton, as we stated at the beginning of the show, and that shows you how much confidence Chuck Demers has in Greg Stephan to start him in this game. Roots Alinen to Steve Smith. Deacon and Gretzky, Curry up front. Gallant intercepting in the corner. Centers, and Eisenman over skates. Higgins gives the puck to Gallant, and the shot hits a skate. Gallant again, and Fjord makes the save. Here's Gretzky. Gretzky is hit by Gallant and was slashed in the midsection, and Gerard Gallant will go to the penalty box. That was well away from the play, and difficult for referee Bob Myers to pick up, but he did. Well, that's exactly what I had in mind with Detroit getting carried away with, with trying to make their point or make it just too obvious. They, they've done a good job, but don't attack somebody like Wayne Gretzky with a slash. Attack him with a body check or get in front of him, pin him to the boards, frustrate him. Edmonton will attempt to tie this contest here late in the second period with their power play. Tough angle to see what happened away from the play. I guess just going by. Just Again, in the offensive zone, there is not much reason for a team to make, take a penalty. The team has 200 feet to come or 180 feet before they can score in your net. And you have lots of help behind you. The Oilers have plenty of ability and stars on this power play. Here's Nielsen. He's on one point with Rusalainen up front. Gretzky, Anderson, and De Messier. Bridgman can't hold the puck. Gretzky. Leaves it. What a pass to Messier to Gretzky. Norwood intercepts. Here's Burr breaking out. He'll just dump the puck in. John Burr, Mel Bridgman, Jill Delorme, and Lee Norwood on the penalty killing crew for Detroit. Two minutes to go in the second period. It's been a tight checking period. Neither team has scored. Anderson to Gretzky. And Burr knocks the puck to center ice. Gallant getting that slashing penalty at 17-27. Roots the line and over skates. This is Kent Nielsen. Higgins and Eiserman now up front killing the Detroit penalty. Eiserman a nice play to intercept. The crowd getting frustrated and that isn't going to help the Oilers any. Roots the line and been indecisive. He wanted to get to the bench. And there's 41 seconds to go in Gallant's penalty, and the Red Wings, Mike Leud, aren't allowing Edmonton to do much. No, they certainly aren't, and Paul Coffey on the ice now. I think this may be his first appearance in the power play, certainly the first and last three attempts. He makes a poor pass. Less than a minute to go in the second period. Red Wings lead it 2-1. to one. 
First period goals by Steve Eiserman and Joe Kosher. Kent Nielsen has a first period power play goal for Edmonton. Yari Curry slaps the puck in. Stefan leaves it for Delorme. He clears it by Coffee the length of the ice. Gallant will be back on in four seconds. Still seeing Edmonton struggle with the power play. The layoff again. Now Detroit at full strength. Curry is offside on the right wing as Tikkanen made one too many moves. And there are 28 seconds to go in this period. It's been, again, a very good period for the Detroit Red Wings. Well, they've done what they've wanted to do, but they cannot stay in this shell forever. They still need some offense to win this hockey game. There's Coffee. The power play, so important to get the puck in deep, get it to a position where you can create your play. And then offside, a bad pass. Just as Foster Hewitt would say, fail to click. And that's what turns a power play chance into a booing session for the crowd. 28 seconds to go in the period. You fellas from Toronto will never forget Foster Hewitt. What you grow up on, you remember. Hockey's legend when it comes to announcing. Foster Hewitt, the late Foster Hewitt. Gerard Galan, a shot and a glove save by Pure. 12 seconds to go. Second period. Game one of the Campbell Conference Championship Series. Detroit leads 2-1 to one as Greg fires the puck in. O'Connell just wants to get it out. And there's the siren. That is the end of a scoreless second period. Detroit got the jump, Mike Leute, in the first period, and they have dictated the tempo here through 40 minutes. Well, they certainly have, but they'll, they'll need more offense, and they'll need to to continue to play this way and of course the next goal we've heard it so often you get to the third period is it going to be 3-1 or will it be 2-2 and will Edmonton take off after 40 minutes Edmonton is outshot Detroit 22-17 but the Red Wings lead the Oilers 2-1 It symbolizes power, success, longevity, and total control. And what you might not realize is that the National Hockey League could well have cast its own version, starring teams like the Detroit Red Wings, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the Boston Bruins, the Philadelphia Flyers, the New York Islanders, the Edmonton Oilers, and in a continuing role, the Montreal Canadiens. Those teams did something that is the envy of all pro sports franchises, they got to the top and for various periods of time were able to maintain complete control. The Montreal Canadiens of the late 1950s were especially dominant. Five consecutive Stanley Cups, a record that has been chased but never equaled. The New York Islanders pursued that dream, winning four straight titles in the early 80s. They badly wanted to equal the Habs record but fell just short. I would have really liked it because, uh, you know, we were going for the drive for five and uh, Montreal was the only other team to do it. To be able to say that we'd done it five times would have been really great, but uh, you look back at four and you, I, I can't complain. The Islanders' success is looked upon as being remarkable. They succeeded as the league got stronger. More and more teams challenged the Islanders for the championship. However, as they slipped, the word dynasty slid with them, only to be replaced by another term. Parody. There's so much parody going on now, it's going to be very difficult for someone to win it four or five years in a row. The possibility of two in a row, fine, but uh, the dynasties of the four and five seems to be over with. The league has done a great deal to, to make parody and to create the, the opposition that everybody seems to want. And uh, Some teams are still struggling on the bottom, and, but uh, if they hang on to their draft choices and trade properly, I think they're going to be strong contenders. Hockey is the last of the four major sports that has the slightest remains of multiple champions. For example, the National Basketball Association Championship was once the sole property of the Boston Celtics. Beginning in the late 1950s, the Celtics won 10 titles in just 11 years. However, since 1970, the league has not had back-to-back -back champions. In baseball, the last repeat World Series winner is the New York Yankees in the late 1970s. In fact, the American League's East Division has had six different winners the last six years. 
In the NFL, the Super Bowl has seen eight different teams in its last four championship games. So a pattern has definitely emerged. It seems that as the years go by, it's tougher to repeat in pro sports. That pattern has finally emerged in the NHL, but why? The draft is against you to start with. Uh, uh, after all, uh, when it was a six-team league, you had one every, you had a draft every six players coming up. Now you have a draft every 21, and if you have a bad pick at 21, uh, uh, you, you you're in trouble. In the 70s, you needed 20, 22 players on your roster. In the 80s, you need 25, 27, 28, and even 30 because of the 80 games that you must play and, uh, and also play them, you know, like three or four games in five or six nights. If the last two seasons are any indication, then the Stanley Cup will be logging a lot of travel miles over the next few years. Or will it? If the Edmonton Oilers win the Cup this year, they will have claimed Lord Stanley's Cup for three of the past four years, and maybe we can start talking about dynasties again. I'll be talking with Mike Leud and Ken Wilson as the road to the Cup continues. Almost 17 thousand jammed in here in Edmonton, Alberta, quite a ways north of Calgary. Not too far from the end of the world, some would say. That's not exactly <laughs> true, but from Edmonton, you can definitely see the, the end, end of the, of the world. world. No scoring in the second period. Shots on goal, Detroit 9, Edmonton 8. Detroit got first period goals from Steve Eiserman and Joe Kosher. Edmonton, a power play goal from Kent Nielsen. But Mike Leuth, the Oilers on the power play are only one for six. That gets you back to the two points I think you've made so succinctly. One, Edmonton. Tough for the power play and a layoff. Detroit has to be careful about getting too aggressive, taking too many penalties. Well, they have they have had their troubles, but uh, I think Coffee is hurting still from all the injuries he's had thus far this year. And, but with the Edmonton Oilers, you never know when that that's going to end. Here's Yari Curry. Can't get a shot as the third period is underway. Sean Burr clears the puck the length of the ice. Kevin Lowe to touch it, and it is icing against Detroit. Just 21 seconds into the third period. With the Oilers using uh, Rayo Rutzelainen on the point, late season acquisition from Europe sometimes just doesn't fit into the power play situation. When we were here at the end of the year, Edmonton's power play was not clicking that well. And, and Rayo being on the point, coffee being used sparingly because of the injuries, they just you know, they are not, obviously, the Edmonton Oilers that we, we all know, but I'm sure we will see the true Edmonton Oilers before this series is anywhere near over. Well, everybody has been raving about how well the Oilers played against the Kings after losing game one to Los Angeles, and, of course, how superbly they played against Winnipeg. Curry shoots wide. Boy, what a typical Gretzky to Curry setup. That's where Curry attacks from the left wing position. Being a right-hand shot, his hands are in the middle of the ice, and he takes that pass so well from Gretzky. And Gretzky knows always he is in position for that pass. Steve Smith flips the puck accidentally into the crowd, and there'll be a face-off back near the Edmonton goal. Steve Smith, of course, has spent the last 12 months Shaking off the goal that went in off him that lost the series to Calgary. Here's that pass by Wayne Gretzky. Yuri Curry, you could book on it. He's off that left post, right post for Greg Stephan. Wayne Gretzky, boy, what an athlete, what a dominant player. I don't really think there's ever been a more dominant player in team sports than Wayne Gretzky. Messier goes down with the puck. Rick Zombo, he's been forced into duty with Veach out, injured in the first period, and Schnepp's on the shelf, didn't even dress. Charlie Huddy, loose puck, and it's Bridgman spinning away from Coffey. Huddy back for Edmonton. Huddy and Coffey, Anderson, Nielsen, and Messier for the Oilers. Huddy helps out Nielsen, and then Mike O'Connell for Detroit to Tim Higgins. Higgins with Bridgman and Sean Burr. Higgins stands. Messier gathering in the puck, looking for some skating room. And he doesn't find it. Detroit really getting four abreast out at center ice there. And boy, right away, they slow up Edmonton. Well, that's what you have to do with Edmonton. Any open ice, Detroit is trying 
not to make that fatal mistake that puts Edmonton into this game. Gumpel overskates the puck. Anderson to Gretzky with Yari Curry. A poor pass. Then DeLorme hands the puck to Curry to Randy Gregg. Stefan steers the pass away. And Curry centers and Stefan gets a pad on the centering effort. Kevin Lowe back. Both teams changing players. Randy Gregg back to Kevin Lowe. Two to one Detroit leads. Just past the two minute mark of the third period. Detroit a huge underdog in this best of seven series trying to pull an upset on the Oilers ice here in the opening game. This crowd with a very impatient feel to it. Here's Essa Tikkanen. Bumps off DeLorme. He goes down. And the wings get the puck out. But it'll be icing. As Ruth Salinen touches the puck. It's the Red Wings two and the Oilers one. The coaches. Different attitudes right now, different philosophies. Glenn Taylor wants to open this game up. Jock, don't get your guys into a position where they have no offense and they're trying to check all night. Jock Demers' teams will tend to get into a third period with a one-goal lead and end up with three shots or four shots and not get enough offense. And you can only be in your own zone so long as the puck deflects into the crowd and the face off will be deep in the Detroit end. Well, it's fine for Edmonton to check, or rather Detroit to check the Edmonton Oilers in this period with the lead and not take that chance, but do it in their end or do it in the neutral zone. Don't try and check Edmonton once they've gotten over your blue line. The boyish Rejo Rootsalinas. Much more an offensive player than a defensive player and getting more ice time than he might have gotten had not Craig Muni been put on the shelf for this series with a bruised kidney. Smith gets the puck along the boards to Dave Hunter. Then Hunter tied up into the boards by DeLorme and play is stopped by referee Bob Myers. So often a team, the underdog as it were, Starts the game off with nothing to lose. And by the time they realize they can win the game, they start thinking about it and become somewhat tentative. I feel Detroit just a little bit more tentative now, trying not to make that mistake, but they can't ever, they still can't get away from the way they were playing, playing the best hockey in the first period. You really don't want to think too much. You stop playing and start to think. You stand around, and all of a sudden, it'll be about four to two Edmonton. DeLorme gets the puck up the boards, gets it right back, can't clear it out. Here's Roots Alignan. Feeding into the corner, Norwood there for the wings. The Detroit Red Wings reaching a pinnacle they haven't seen in years here in the Stanley Cup playoffs. Roots Alignan. In the middle, Nielsen on the wing to Messier. The shot blocked by Norwood. Rutzelainen keeps the puck in, wheels it to Messier in the near corner. Now the wings have to get the puck back in a hurry, and they do. Norwood. Bridgman. Here's Paul Coffey. Now the wings don't want him to get started. He gives the puck away. Koser. Shot deflects off Coffey's stick. Boy, the Oilers at the moment. Just over four minutes into the third period, don't look like they're going anywhere. Except back to the dressing room to shower and get ready for game two Thursday night. Essa taking it. O'Connell clears the puck out, and Huddy will retreat. Huddy, Coffee, Gretzky, Tekin, and Curry now on the ice for the two-time Stanley Cup champion Oilers. Coffee. His shot, and that's stopped by Greg Stefan, who has been superb. And the Red Wings do what they will do frequently in the third period. They ice the puck. 15-11 to go in the third, and the Oilers are down by a goal. Oilers expect by most to move on against Philadelphia in a rematch of the finals of two years ago, or expected to move on against the defending cup champion Canadians. But they're having a tough time with the upstart Red Wings here in game one of this best of seven series. Here's Bob Probert. He's on with Iserman and Gallant. Back for the puck, Randy Gray. On defense with Lowe. 
Up front, Gretzky, Curry, and Tikkanen. Gretzky after Norwood. Gets the puck. In front. Now to low. Curry to low. Bouncing puck to flex wide. Tikkanen deflecting it wide. Here's low, and he can't get the puck as Iserman pokes it away. Five and a half minutes have gone by. The third period is scoreless, just as the second period was. Detroit getting first period goals from Iserman and Kosher. In the middle, Nielsen getting a power play goal for Edmonton. Gretzky, Yari Curry trying to get on his forehand. And from the point, Greg shoots wide. Delorme. And Detroit is not reticent at all about icing the puck to relieve the pressure. I would be a little bit concerned right now if I were Jock Demers. His team is not interested in making a play coming out of their end, but just dumping it out. Sometimes they're getting the puck out. Other times, they're not clearing the blue line. That type of turnover, once it happens and you're thinking defense, defense, it's impossible to turn it around and go and get some goals, and it just gives the team you're playing against so much confidence. Here's that play with Yari Curry trying to get on his forehand. As a screen, Greg Stefan. that's what he doesn't want to do. He doesn't want to play Edmonton when they have a couple people in front of the net or they're putting pressure on him in his zone. Two or three passes, it's hard for a goaltender to stay in front of the play when, when they're doing that. Detroit Oates winning the draw from Crucial Niski. A battle behind the net. Up from the defense, Smith. Then Zombo intercepts. To Adam Oates, pulling away from Crucial Niski. Higgins on his left. Kumpel trails on the right. And to the bench goes Adam Oates for the Red Wings. A loose puck. McSorley to Smith. Boy, the Red Wings buzzing in the Edmonton zone. Zombo is shot. And Fjord clears it away from Kumpel. Crucial Niski for the Edmonton Oilers. They trail two to one. Roots the line and up from the defense. Centers! And Lamola May unable to get a good shot away. Crucial Niski plays the puck back in. This is Marty McSorley through the goal mound. Mola May checked by Tim Higgins. McSorley hit back to Coffey. The shot wide off the back of the net. McSorley centers, and it hits Stefan Skate. Stefan was caught just for a moment. Mike O'Connell. There's 12.50 to go in regulation play. Buddy to McSorley. The Red Wings lead the Oilers 2-1. to one. Coffee falling down more than anything. Dave Barr a shot. Cure the save. Barr shoots and misses the open net. Now play turns the other way. Messier for Edmonton. This is the kind of play they'll score on after a close call. The Detroit player who was trying to check Messier, Lee Norwood is down and injured behind the Detroit net. Well, you can see when he lost his footing with Messier, he hit the boards very hard. You could hear the thud. It seems like he's hit it with his shoulder, jammed it somehow. Detroit can ill afford another injured defenseman. 29 to go, and the Red Wings lead the Oilers 2-1. to one. McGregor, a former Red Wing, in fact, on the right, hails from Edmonton, and not that many years ago, many of the Detroit Red Wing players came from this area. Detroit had an agreement where they got players from the old Edmonton Oil Kings, and Bruce McGregor was one of them. Back in the days when the parent clubs owned the players all the way down past junior and into the minor system. Times have changed a bit, and certainly they've come a long way, hockey-wise, here in Edmonton. 12.25 to go in the third period, Detroit leading 2-1. to one. There hasn't been a goal since Kosher broke the 1-1 tie at 12.32 of the opening period. This is Huddy. He's on defense with Coffey. Messier to center ice with Anderson and Nielsen. Coffey. Look at Bridgman all over Messier. Anderson and the puck to center ice. That was a very telling play the way Bridgman stayed with Messier completing That's the check. Good good positional play by Bridgman not following the puck but staying as you say with the check. Out to center ice for Kent Nielsen. Two to one Detroit. Offside 
is Edmonton. These Detroit Red Wings overlooked by most experts. Even with a new coach, they were expected to miss the playoffs, but it's been a complete turnaround, and that's where we are, high above the ice surface here at the Northlands Coliseum. A bevy of broadcasters, media lights. The closer it gets to the Stanley Cup, the more people are covering it. These fans trying to charge up the somewhat sluggish Edmonton Oilers, who of course have not played for eight days while the Red Wings were in a seven-game series with Toronto. What Detroit is doing, they're starting to play a little bit more as they were earlier in the game, clogging the center ice zone, checking Edmonton before they get in their blue line. And if they do penetrate, I wonder if his boss knows he's at the game and acting this way. I hope he's not a banker. Here's Randy Gregg. Bill Delore. Just getting the puck out. Gregg ready to carry it back in for Edmonton. Nice pass. Curry! And the shot deflects high. There's 11.20 to go in the third period. The Oilers. Big favorites are trailing the Red Wings two to one. Randy Gregg again. Poke checked by Eiserman and just content are the Red Wings to clear the zone. The Red Wings are playing well again. They're checking the Oilers in the other end of the rink. Game two will be here at Edmonton Thursday night. Then games three and four Saturday and next Monday in Detroit. The Detroit Red Wings have never played a hockey game later than the 5th of May. So they'll go into virgin territory on Thursday night in game two. The Oilers shoot the puck in from their half of the ice, and it's icing against Edmonton, a very frustrated team. 10.35 remaining, third period. Detroit by a goal. From the faceoff, the Oilers break out, and Messier backhands the puck to McTavish. And Messier covered, but here's McClellan. They've got Messier on now with McClellan and McTavish, in effect, double shifting. Mark Messier, the puck out to center ice, shot in offside by Rusalina. What the team will do in this situation, the Oilers will try and free up a player like Messier, maybe double shift Wayne Gretzky, trying to get some offense. But the Red Wings are playing very well on their end as far as Checking up the loose man, staying with the player who has passed the puck. Game number two of the Wales Conference Final. Tomorrow night at the Spectrum in Philadelphia. The defending Stanley Cup champion Oilers attempting to gain a split against the Flyers in Philadelphia. It all begins at 7.30 right here tomorrow night on ESPN. That is 7.30 Eastern Time. For those of you in Hawaii, check the local listings. It is six hours earlier. Oh, it's an afternoon game in Honolulu. Two to one. Detroit leads it with 10.09 to go here in the opening game of the Campbell Conference Championship Series. I've always loved the Stanley Cup playoffs when you come in from the beach. This is Mike O'Connell. Ashton dumped at center ice and Roots Elaine is the first man back. Around to Dave Hunter. His brother Mark with St. Louis. Brother Dale with Quebec. And McTavish is offside on the near wing. The Oilers now have outshot Detroit 27 to 21, but Detroit has the lead. Five of the seven shots in this period, not too surprisingly, have belonged to Wayne Gretzky and the Oilers. As, uh, even though they've outshot Detroit, it still hasn't been the type of game that the Oilers are best known for, and they haven't put a lot of pressure at the net. Got the puck inside the Detroit blue line, and made a couple passes and really forced the issue. I think many people felt Detroit would be fortunate to win one game in this best of seven series. And I must admit that I would agree with that assessment. Icing against Detroit coming in, I felt, Mike Leut, that this would be a five-game series most likely going to Edmonton. And I think with Detroit winning here tonight, they got a better shot now at two wins because I felt they would win game three this Saturday night in Detroit. Don't let those Detroit people hear you talk like that, Ken Wilson. 
I don't think we're going out on a limb by picking Edmonton. Obviously, they're overwhelming favorites and they have more offensive talent, but the people have been counting out Detroit all year and didn't give them any chance at the beginning. And I don't know if they gave them any chance at all once they lost first place in the last game of the season, but they showed a great deal of character, and that's what Jacques Demers says his team has lots of. These fans, 17,000 strong, given rattles. They're sort of hand clappers, if you will, or rattles. When they came in, they could drive a goaltender wearing red absolutely crazy. Never mind a goaltender. What about tomorrow morning when that son or daughter picks up that rattle and wakes up the household? $19,000 worth of rattles. Canadian funds, by the way, given out to the fans as they enter the Northlands Coliseum tonight. It is Mark Lamb against Wayne Gretzky. And Lamb wins the faceoff. He'll tell his grandchildren about that. Detroit gets the puck out and roots the line and back. Detroit, a quick player change. Nine and a half minutes remaining. Oilers trailing two to one here in the third period. Roots the line and the shot deflects high. Curry can't get a bouncing puck. Gallant can't clear. Gretzky keeps it in and then hands it to Bob Probert. Back to Gilles Delorme. Delorme on defense with Norwood. They say the Oilers could not play the puck at center ice and another icing against the Detroit Red Wings. Two to one, Detroit. Even with Mike Liut in Edmonton, and I'm starting to believe in the Red Wings, at least for this game, it's going well for them. Well, two years ago, when the Oilers and the Flyers squared off, they didn't think the Flyers could skate with the Oilers. They won the first game 2-1, but they lost the next four games. But cleared out by Mel Bridgman. Paul Coffey over to Charlie Huddy. The Nielsen-Anderson-Messier line on. Coffey lugging the mail. His backhand shot deflects off the stick of Delorme. Now Anderson over to Nielsen. Back to Messier. Boy, they know where they're going. Nielsen in the far corner. What Detroit has to keep from doing in spots like that is they have to keep from running around, and they've done very well. Norwood gets the puck out, and Detroit just chops it in to the Edmonton zone. There's 8.22 to go. Third period, two to one, Detroit. Messier, Anderson, can't get the shot. Taken out by Bob Probert and Sean Burr. Now Anderson moves in front, but the wings come up with a puck, Sean Burr. Behind the play, Greg Steffen, who was clobbered by Anderson, is shaken up. Greg Steffen, shaken up. Probably when the play came out from behind the net, We'll get a replay on it. I believe Greg reached for the puck and the two players collided and fell on top of him. Sometimes you get your head squashed once in a while in a place in a situation like that. Anderson O'Connell uh, looks like that's what happened. But again, Greg Steffen is as tough as anybody that plays goal in this league. Connell doing a good job in front of the net. He's in the right spot there. Fortunately, he didn't know his goalie was going to reach for the puck when he knocked Anderson down. Greg Steffen getting the call tonight from Jock Demers after watching the series with Toronto. Consequently, the veteran Glenn Hanlon is the backup goalie tonight for the Red Wings. Now, what do you do next game, Ken Wilson, if the Red Wings should prevail with do you use Greg Steffen or is Glenn Hanlon back in the net? You go with Greg Steffen. We shall see. Red Wings lead it two to one. The puck, you'll be very surprised to hear this. They iced it. <laughs> so that's what's happened in the last few seconds. And Glenn say they're looking for some of that oiler magic to come to the forefront. We saw this last year against Calgary where Calgary would stifle Edmonton all night. And then when the game would be on the line with a goal being the differential, Edmonton would really come on in the last six or seven minutes of the game. Sometimes scoring, sometimes not. But we'll see how Detroit handles it from here on out. Red Wings lead two to one. First period, Iserman scored at 10-12. 24 seconds later, Nielsen a power play goal. Then at 12-32, Kosher scores. 
Big save there by Stephan. Barr gets the puck out. Ashton after the puck. Greg beats him to it. Ahead to Crucial Niski. On to McSorley. Back O'Connell. McSorley in front and Crucial Niski beaten to the puck. Now Stephan in traffic. And the puck will come to the neutral zone. Here's O'Connell on defense with Lewis. Up to Oates, two on two with Ashton. Smith back with Greg. Here's Ashton. He shoots. Oh, and Fjord, who's been idly watching the play for most of the third period, comes up with a dazzling save on Brent Ashton. You know how difficult that can be, Ken Wilson, when you haven't been in the play, and then the opposition gets that type of chance. But that's goaltending. And that type of goaltending can win Stanley Cups. That big save when your team needs it most. That is only the third shot the Red Wings have had on Grand Fuhr in the third period. And that comes as no surprise, as we said, Detroit typically in a third period with a 2-1 lead will have only three or four shots the entire period. I'm surprised that they've been able to be this successful doing that, whether it's a layoff or not. They've done a good job, and, and uh, who would think that the Oilers could be shut out like this at home? The Oilers have won eight consecutive playoff games this spring. In regular season play over recent years, the Oilers have beaten the Red Wings 13 straight times. In fact, the last 20 meetings, Detroit only a tie and one setback, or I should say one victory. All the rest have been losses to the Edmonton Oilers. This would be an upset of a mammoth proportion here if the Red Wings can hold on. You never know what type of game it's going to be and if the Detroit Red Wings are to prevail, you never know how well this is going to stand for them, how much confidence they'll get, not only this year, but next year also. Roots align in for the Oilers. On defense with Steve Smith. Up on the right wing, Yari Curry. Checked by Lee Norwood. That's the Detroit defenseman standing up on the play. Gretzky, Rutsalainen, Smith, and a chance for Eiserman. Rutsalainen back. Gallant with Eiserman. Here's Gallant. Doesn't get the good pass. And taken out on the play is DeLorme. And Gretzky starts up ice for the Oilers. On to Yari Curry. Here's Rutsalainen with Tikkanen. Coffee at the point. The shot, and it's wide. Gretzky centers. Here's Gretzky again. Gretzky to Rutsalainen, the shot just wide. Rutsalainen beaten to the puck, and it's Steve Eiserman with Bob Probert and Gerard Gallant. The Red Wings dangerous again. Curry caught standing, Gallant shoots, he scores! Gerard Gallant as the Red Wings come out of their shell, and they catch the Oilers standing flat-footed in front of Grant Fjord. Three to one, Detroit. Far too much time with the puck. Look how much time he has. He can cut clear across the other side of the net. And he waits for the first his player to get in the right spot. Gallant makes no mistake. Giving the Oilers a little of their own medicine. Giving it a Yuri Curry type goal. Gerard Gallant comes up with a goal. He has six goals now in 12 Detroit Red Wings playoff games. And with six minutes to go, the Red Wings amazingly lead the Edmonton Oilers 3-1. to one. Joe Kosher just taps the puck in for Detroit. Nielsen to Coffey. 15.57, the time of Detroit's goal. Gallant getting it. Rick Zombo. Here's Coffey intercepting. His shot hit Sean Burr's stick. This could well fire up Edmonton. They're not dead yet. And the Red Wings ice the puck. Detroit with a lead. 5.21 to go. And it's 3-1 Red Wings. Now Mike Liut, the Red Wings with a two-goal lead, can really play their defensive style. Not that they haven't for two periods, but they can really do it now. Well, they've got Edmonton exactly where they wanted. They capitalized on a mistake. Here's Gilles Delorme. There's no secret now. Detroit gets the puck in their own end, clear at the length of the ice. That time, an Oiler player could have played it in the neutral zone. 
Detroit going with defensive players. Barr, Oates, Ashton. On defense, Norwood and Delorme. Hunter leaves the puck for Gregg ahead to McTavish. Oilers need to strike and strike quickly. Dave Hunter. A pass for Lowe, broken up by Adam Oates. And Lowe stop Oates. Gregg to McTavish. And Oates, a nice job coming back. Four and a half minutes left in the third period. The highly favored Oilers trail three to one. Hunter bouncing right off Lee Norwood. And the Red Wings are offside with 4.20 to go. Well, we mentioned the latest the Detroit Red Wings have ever played hockey, May the 5th. The last time they got this far was in 1966. Again, another replay of the goal. Detroit capitalizing on a mistake. Edmonton standing around waiting for somebody else to do the work. And Edmonton player getting back too late. That's a mistake that Edmonton can make, and that's the time that Detroit must score. They're going to continue on and be competitive in this round. That game Detroit played on May the 5th, 1966, at the old Olympian Detroit. It was a game that they lost and ended their season. They lost to Montreal in the Stanley Cup Finals. But this has been a different year, and going back to 66 for Detroit is really going back to their last glory years. They were a fine team in the early and mid 60s. It's been a long, long wait for the Detroit Red Wing fans and they're going to be celebrating in Detroit tonight if they can hold on and beat Glenn Sather's Oilers. And there will be one ovation come game three in this series. Big sword or Gretzky rather shooting the puck in. Here's Dave Lewis. And this will be an icing. There is 3.58 to go. At goal at 15.57, a big one for Detroit. Iserman assisting. Gallant gets the assist, so Iserman has a goal and an assist tonight for the Detroit Red Wings. They have gotten some very strong goaltending from Greg Steffen. And Jacques Demers has given them the usual heavy dose of you can do it. Yes, he's done that since the outset of the playoffs. Even in the first round against Chicago, he was talking Stanley Cup and having played for him in the playoffs. That is his style. He wants his players to feel good about themselves and not let anything stand in their way or at least in their way of giving a big effort. The Edmonton Oilers have been held to a first period power play goal. Crucial Niski wide with his shot. Gretzky has been held off the scoreboard tonight. That in itself is a major story. Root Salina with Crucial Niski and McSorley, and he shoots it wide. Marty McSorley with a fine chance. Gerard Gallant with Tim Higgins. Here's Higgins, and he's held back by McSorley doing some outstanding back checking. Now the Red Wings just shoot the puck in again. And really, it's been most of the night a night of frustration for the Edmonton Oilers. The Detroit has done exactly what they wanted to do. Get the lead and then get a third period goal to lead three to one. Now the Oilers dangerous. Iserman on his knees can't clear. Coffee keeps the puck in. Iserman intercepting and the Detroit captain clears it out. 2.50 to go in regulation play. Three to one Detroit. Game two right back here in Edmonton on Thursday night. Our ESPN coverage of this series continues Saturday night in Detroit with game three. When Anderson stopped by Stefan, a fine opportunity for Anderson. There's 2.25 to go. Anderson again. Across Huddy, and he's robbed by Stefan. And the wing, Sean Burr with one man back. Paul Coffey just flips the puck ahead. Both teams changing players. 2.05 showing on the clock here at the Northlands Coliseum. Detroit with goals from Iserman, Kosher, and Gallant. And they lead 3-1. to one. 
Curry to Randy Gregg, and he's poke check. Here's Curry, and the shot deflects wide. Rick Zombo along the boards to Oates, and he tips it to center ice. A minute 42 to go. And the Detroit Red Wings are on the verge of a huge upset here in the first game of the Campbell Conference Championship Series. The puck carried in offside by Craig McTavish with 1.32 to go. I think when all is said and done tonight, Mike Liute, one of the big things that will be said is that Edmonton was rusty after the eight-day layoff. Well, that's what you'll hear, but you cannot take anything away from Detroit. They played a terrific game, and they stayed with their game plan. They were fortunate enough to get the lead, and they played very well with it. And the Edmonton people leaving in droves at this point. But a minute and 32 can be enough time for the Edmonton Oilers. So the Red Wings, losers of 13 straight to Edmonton, meets the Oilers for the first time ever in Stanley Cup competition. And with little rest, after a tough seven-game series with Toronto, they roar in to the Northlands Coliseum, and they hold a 3-1 lead with 1.32 remaining. Don't forget, tomorrow night, back to the Spectrum here on ESPN, game two of the Flyers-Canadian series with Philadelphia up by a game. How do you see that series, Mike? Well, that's, that's, they match up well, and I think that will be a long series. As opposed to this, which many feel will be a short series. Many now will go back to the crystal balls and those expert machines after this game. Not too many teams ever come into this building and win playoffs or regular season. Stay with us at the end of the game. We'll have a player of the game. Tom Mees will have more. A lot yet to come here on the NHL Road to the Cup on ESPN. A delayed offside, whistled down, and there'll be a neutral faceoff with exactly one minute remaining and the Detroit Red Wings leading by a pair. A minute to go, Edmonton. I, I don't think that this will stand in their way. They obviously have too much experience and two Stanley Cups behind them. I think the telling tale may be in games two and three of this series. Well, I can guarantee you that game two on Thursday night will be different. And then Detroit, I would suspect, will have to bounce back Saturday night at Joe Louis Arena. Of course, you know, predicting is one thing and being realistic is another thing, but you just never know. I guess that's why they play them all. You've been surprised before, and the Red Wings are trying to pull off a mammoth surprise here in this series. Fuhrer has gone to the bench. The Oilers with an extra attacker. And Stefan makes the save on Glenn Anderson. 45 seconds to go. You see the time ticking away. Oilers maintain possession. Their net is empty. They trail by two. Messier is stopped. Burr clears to center ice. After the puck is Dave Barr. Roots the line and takes Barr out. 28 seconds. Three to one Red Wings. Here's a shot, and that's blocked. Nielsen's drive, another effort stop. And the Red Wings are all over the Edmonton Oilers tonight. Glenn Anderson. Here's Gretzky. He centers, and Anderson drilled down by O'Connell before he can find the puck. Five seconds to go. And that'll do it. Well, Jacques Demers, who a season ago, led the St. Louis Blues into this Campbell Conference Championship Series against Calgary, comes up with a big upset win here in Game 1 at Edmonton. Don't go away, we'll be back. The final, Red Wings 3, and there's 1.